This is Ryan from Solomon's Silence. We are here with Pastor Lacqua in the kitchen for In the Kitchen. Um, why don't you guys just give us a quick little background about how you guys became to be Pastor Lacqua? Whoa. Uh, can we start? We went to school together in Rochester, uh, middle school. Uh, I went to high school in Maryland, where I stayed around here. Uh, I ended up moving back and we were doing different projects. Uh, I was doing solo stuff. Brent was uh, doing spoken word. He had this group called Coleman Young. Um, he came to a show, I think mean, you came to the factory. Mm -hmm. and I was doing a solo show. Downtown Rochester. In downtown Rochester. Um, and we just started linking up from there. And then um, for the Metro Times blowout in 2000. Well, 10. 10, yeah. 2010, I needed a hype man. I never had one. Solo stuff, I was so by myself. And I was like, well, I need somebody that can rap and that, you know, we're able to bounce off that. So I actually thought of Brent. And we started having that be the dynamic for my solo stuff. And then it got to the point where we were just like, you know, let's just start working on some songs. I don't know how it initially came to be. We had some other songs we'll never put out. We worked on. And then uh, and I was like, well, let's just try it and see what happens. You know, whatever. Nobody likes it, it's no big deal, and then people started latching onto it for people loved it. People were like, that's the dopest shit. And then people started touring it and shit, and they're like, the tightest shit I've ever heard. <laughs> Alright, um, between you guys, what kind of stylistic similarities did you guys see in each other that you felt meshed so well? Uh, I, think, I think we're both very literal people, you know, so we kind of read the world the same way, like read the world as text. You know, a lot of people don't kind of view it like that. So I think when it came to just writing songs, being a songwriter, essentially is I think the, the thing that we, we do well. And we do uh, kind of well together. So like co-songwriting, um, coming up with ideas. You know, you can't, can't do that with everybody yet, so. You agree? Mm-hmm. All right, 100%. Okay. <laughs> um, Pass a lot, but that comes from, correct me if I'm wrong, someone you guys went to high school with their last name. Yeah, he uh, recently called me too. Um, Every time he calls me, it's, it's, there's, something, there's something momentous going on in his life. What happened now? I think he got his own place. He moved out of his house, nice. you know? Good. So, like, I need to call him back and be like, you know. Good job. <laughs> As, he calls me every couple of months because he was in a metal band. Uh, some like dissociated or something. There's a D in it, uh, and yeah, we the first time we met, him, I hadn't seen him in ten well, some odd years. He gives me the CD and he's like, "Don't lose it. This, this is my own copy. Don't lose this." All right, yeah. Uh, in the time that I had seen him until he called me asking about the CD, I'd moved like twice. I had no idea where the CD is. I'm like, "Gosh, oh, he keeps calling me." And he's like, I need my CD, I need my CD. Nah, nah, nah. and then when I finally got together, I haven't heard from him since, and I was like, eight months ago. So was, he is, cool? was, was he cool with everything when you guys started using his name? No, he was not. He was not. He was probably like, who are these dicks that are using my name for their benefit or whatever, right. but I, he, uh... He wants to play, he wants to play with us. Oh, but he's, he wants to open your pass a lot. But he wants to be, like, cloaked. He doesn't want to be, he doesn't want people to know what's him. He had like, was he saying he had like stage fright? Yeah, he got stage fright. So we were like, maybe we can, we can turn the drums around and you can play with your back to the audience. I don't know anybody that's doing that. Kind of like how Jim Morrison started performing. Really? Yeah, oh. he started performing. He didn't face the crowd at all. When yeah. He started. So basically, the anti is the Jim Morrison. That's what we want. Conclusion. You guys have put out quite a few records. Do you find it difficult to put out a full-length record when you know you've got stuff going on with Cole and Young, and you all you to do, you know, things on your own? Do you guys find it hard to collaborate and come up with a full-length? I mean, I don't think it's hard. I mean, we it's just putting putting the time to it. Uh, but, you know, there's always a million things going on, so it's just finding the right time. And like the way past life has always been. Partially because we have the other projects, but we're not like concerned with knocking out like 30, 
contractually or something. We just that's not how we've ever operated. So there's not pressure in that respect. We haven't put anything on the muscle, we've been working on getting a lot ready. Um, yeah, we haven't put a hell of a lot in three years, so it's, yeah. it's interesting to see how that works and how it can still, you know. Is that the longest length you guys have gone without a <laughs> record? I think that there's been more time between not putting on an album than it has been as almost as much as the group prior to that. You know, we started in 2011, and then last thing came out was like 2012. You know what I mean? And so just been working on other stuff and a few songs here and there, or whatever. But um, yeah. All right, for your latest in well, your upcoming release, Church, right? Mm -hmm. um, what was the inspiration behind this one? Are you guys religious or? Super religious. Okay. Yeah. I'm so like super just, not religious. Super religious. Okay. Only so Brian one time I was like, yo, God, I feel like that. So and we're in a coffee house too. Mm -hmm. But it's just all like after that it all clicked. So what was it, what was the what really brought the name and the record together? What brought the church? Yeah, yeah the yeah, album? Yeah. I mean, it's a simple name. I think I think when it comes to just like naming albums, like it was once upon a time cool to have long album titles. Yeah. I don't think that's cool. Anymore. How'd you guys come about getting Clint Eastwood to produce it? Um, I met Jax uh, a long, long time ago, uh, and this was when the factory they moved out of Rochester and they had a new warehouse, and she was doing a solo set. She usually played with her brother Seth, who's we consider Flint Eastwood on this project. But she had a, their first project was called Apple Trees and Tangerines. It was with their youngins. And so she uh, was doing some acoustic stuff. I gave her a CD. She just moved to LA uh, with her brother and just working on music. And then they started doing a collection called Power to the People. And it had a, it highlighted a bunch of local groups. Uh, I think one, or they were trying to do a song uh, a week for a year, some of that effect. But they sent us some beats and were like, hey, you want to work on some stuff? And then we did one track and then we said, hey, you know, we really like this, we like your sound and we think it could be really cool if we did something together. So that, the groundwork was like years ago and then uh, we started taking it seriously like last year and started getting these songs together like, oh, we actually have something and uh, just like a mutual respect for each other's craft. Not to mention that, that around that time we met Funny Sweater, or they came back to Detroit, Brian and I were getting a lot of opening slots and we're getting a lot of shows. And so part of the relationship was like, yo, Clint Eastwood's dope, you know, we can hook him up with some shows. And so Metro Times Blowout uh, 2013, we, we actually organized an event and we actually booked Jax and booked Seth, we booked Tune Day and put together a show to kind of like expose some of the other talents that are coming out of the country. And that's something Brian and I kind of are known to do. All right, and they produced the album, and they're also going to be performing with you guys. Well, not with you guys, but at the record release, correct? Mm -hmm. yeah, well, they have, yeah, they're doing a new side project called Sibling. Um, that's Jackson Seth, and then uh, we're going to be performing with them for the song we did together. All right, is there any other Detroit talent that will be making them payments on the album? Yeah. That's all, that's all you get. And that's all we get? Yeah, yeah. But there will be. Okay, all right. Excited. <laughs> um, what would you guys say is like the most important thing you guys keep in mind when you're making a record? Tough question. Pass it before my last man. For me, just fucking do the thing. Like I get so worked up about anything else. It's like just get the song. Just you're just trust yourself a little bit, and then just. Do what comes out, and then that has worked in the beginning. It's just like just keep doing that. And you want to add that? Uh, make the ad libs. That's right. The ad libs that we have. Okay. Yeah. High ad libs. <laughs> okay. All right. Um. As an end goal for the record, what would you guys say you want to get out of this? Uh, I want to be sleeping out of bed. <laughs> I want money pillows and a money comforter because it'll be it'll, it'll be cold for me. I mean, it's gonna be vortex next week, so I want a money quilt. 
Um, right, I also want you know some like you want some season season tickets to to Red Wings game. That at the new stadium. Oh, come on, come on. First season, first season. That would be nice. Yeah, that would be nice. That's what you want. The, yeah. Um, from this album, we want Red Wings tickets. Yeah, uh, for free. Or in Detroit. If you could, if you, if if Mike Elledge, if you're watching this, or your boys, like literally your boys. Season tickets. We'll do. We'll be. Let them fly. Let them fly. We'll be sure to send this to him. We'll send it direct. I don't know. Is he? Use, is he a Twitter dude? Oh my gosh. Well, I know the images are. Maybe they have something next. Okay. Um. Any details? You guys are able to or want to give out about the uh, release party coming up? <sighs> so there's going to be a lot of exciting things going on with that release party. But I think what I'm most excited for is the El Guapo food truck that will be there. <sighs> yeah. Good yeah, we got some, there is, it's going to be a sweet show. I mean, uh, we have, you know, it's at a new venue, Eight and Sand, which is very cool to have sort of an inaugural show there. Uh, Tune Day Laundry is playing, uh, and he's a nice guy. Uh, Open Mike Eagle is coming from LA. He's metal music and yeah. all fire club, so he's coming. And then we got a sick DJ lineup. We got um, yeah. Dante LaSalle, we got Nothing Elegant, we got DJ Matt Rose, and we got Charles Charles Freeze. So, music all day, all night. We're going to try to do all night drug rave. We're gonna have water stations because people don't, not everybody drinks, and then they're not gonna fucking charge $3 for a bottle of water, water. so we're just gonna have uh, Man, all, water. All, water, all, all so much water. water, yeah. It's very considerate. We do, you know. We, we do, do our job. <laughs> we do our job. Very considerate. So when you guys are putting together something like this, what, like, how do you guys come about picking a place, picking an artist, and, you know? How do you guys, you guys obviously have a lot of friends in Detroit, how do you guys pick people without hurting someone's feelings, you know? Um, I would say maybe it's like, it's more like happenstance, you know, sometimes. Sometimes things are convenient. I think uh, artists are so busy in Detroit, it's like, you ask them to do something, they're like, yo, like, I got some on my own going on that day, you know? So I think it's, I just, I just think it's, we tend to work better with flexible artists, you know? So the more flexible you are, the more you're willing to like take a loss, you know? You know, rap life ain't all fancy, right? It's a lot of losses. I'm not a rap artist, I got money that I'm using. <laughs> I got money, I got like, I got like a dollar on my life. And I just got off of work. So it's 50 cents more than me. <laughs> yeah, we work, we work so much just to have money. <laughs> right. Uh, but what, what was the original question? Um, about the release party, how you pick everything. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's, I guess it's just, it, it depends. Sometimes for certain shows you go, oh, they'd be great. And there's like, you know, we, there's so many incredible people that both that we live with in both, you know, just everywhere in, in the city. And so um, I, there's, we, we get a, a lot of shows that we try to like have, work with somebody different every show to make everything very unique to itself. You know what I mean? Okay. So we've been, we haven't been doing shows as much but we make them, um, we're doing less, or doing more with less. Right. Ryan, are, Ryan and I are also politicians. You guys are running for office? Yeah. yeah. Right. I don't know, I'm, I'm literally yeah. running for every position. <laughs> so. To try to use it. Yeah, every, every, position. every position I'll be on. For every department. Yeah. Just fill me in <laughs> under everything that you want, and I'm sure someone's going to say. It could be a small, you know. Well, you guys got my vote already. That's one. Thanks. That's great. Um, well, to close out in the kitchen while we're in the kitchen, any kind of last remarks you guys want to make about the album or the record release party later? Mm, no, but I, I do want to say I'm learning how to control my habits of driving. Like I have, I have like natural habits when I drive, so like I either like to smoke weed or like eat. Like text. Are you talking about like literally driving the car? Yeah, okay. like I gotta be doing something else besides <laughs> driving. I think that's how ugly it is. It's all right. I don't know, I'm like dangerous with it though. So I'm like, I didn't eat on my way here, I didn't smoke weed on my way here. I'm like, I was focused. That's what I'm saying. 
Uh, while we're in that kitchen, I would like to say if you're going to be making eggs later, if you start with a low heat, that's what I've learned works best. If you crack them in and it's a high heat, they're going to get really crispy on the bottom, and I'm not a fan of that. So you want to go low heat. I use butter, probably do olive oil, but there's again, there's a lot of uh, oil popping back unless you have a oil shield. Uh, and then you ramp up the heat. That'll do you good. Have everything to do with that. All right. That's essentially that's what church is. If you read between the lines, you know what I'm saying? All right. Well, this was Brian with Sound and Silence with Pass a Lot What in the Kitchen or in the Kitchen. And uh, stay focused while driving and uh, start with the low key one. Okay.